You're listening to... Offering in-depth analysis on all things Boston Celtics. With your hosts, Jim and Mike Quigley. All right. Hey, another episode of our show. Are you excited? You're so excited. Toronto Raptors. Pre-game show. Hot foul. Pre-game. Celtics coming off a loss to the Hawks and a win against... The Nets, and I, I I find them both very, very interesting games. And, Mike, why don't we spend some time going around the league, too, a little bit as um, I have some questions I want to ask you and you your know, thoughts on different things on how offseason moves look right now and how you think they'll look later on. But I was – Absolutely. Yeah. And Mike's making mac and cheese right now, too, so he, he's multitasking. I'm going to go on mute for a second because I'm trying to find the cheese. So. He's, he's trying to find the cheese. So Celtics, you know, in my opinion, that Hawks game and, you know, really the continuation of the week before, where right? I, I just don't think they played connected basketball at all, particularly on the defensive end. Um, they were out of rotation all game long, really. You know, and we can get to the turnovers and Dyson Daniels and just being a pest over there and the Celtics really being loose with the basketball and careless and not focused on the offensive end. But I, I thought defensively, they were a complete mess, and you saw it. And you saw it with guys just getting to the paint continuously, um, which led to open shots, it led to guys in rotation, which in the fourth quarter led to a lot of offensive rebounds for the Hawks, second chance points. And when you when you looked when you started adding everything up, the Celtics turnovers on offense, the second chance points they were giving up, getting killed in points in the paint. You know the fact that it was a one point game is really remarkable. Um, I, I don't even want to give the Celtics credit that it was a one point game. They were just playing a team that they were immensely more talented than. But I, 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 we saw a lot of that in previous games too, Mike. Um, right. before that Atlanta game, we saw it against Brooklyn earlier in the week. We saw it Thank in the you, Golden yeah. State game in the fourth quarter in particular. Mm -hmm. And, you know, I think it finally caught up to them. In the well, it caught up to him against the Warriors, certainly in the fourth quarter. But I thought it really caught up to, with, with them in the Hawks, and they paid for bad basketball, and the and the basketball gods did. made them pay for it. You know, they missed free yep. throws down the stretch. Tatum's three that would have put him up four went in and around the rim, and then popped out, and then the Nets went down and made their shots. It was, I'm sorry, not the Nets, the Hawks. It was as bad, bad a game. It was the first time I think I texted you in probably over a season or a year, or whatever, calendar year, that I was actually angry with how they played. Um, it just, it didn't sit well with me. They certainly didn't take it seriously. This this NBA Cup, I don't think, really matters to them, which, you know, that doesn't bother me at all. But it, it, they were not locked in and ready to go uh, at all. And then on the flip side was... And I thought there was a continuation of that into the first quarter versus the Nets, where they did not play well, got off to another slow start. And then what is interesting, I thought Brown and Tatum took the initiative of getting to the paint, playing good defense, really being the leaders of that team. And then I thought from about the second quarter, midway through the second quarter to the end of the game, they played some of the best basketball they played all season against the Nets. So um, we saw the worst of the Celtics in these two games. And then I thought we saw the best of the Celtics. And, uh, you know, I, I guess at the same yeah, time, Mike, are... I'll give it back over to you. You have these games during the year, you know, you just have these games during the season sometimes. Oh yeah. I mean, it was very reminiscent to me of, uh, the Lakers game last year when Austin Reeves went bananas and LeBron wasn't playing and, mm -hmm. uh, AD wasn't playing and the Celtics clearly disrespected their opponent. And, uh, lost at home. And I I got to be honest, I was rooting for the Hawks because I didn't think this would be a good one for the Celtics. I think they need to be taught a lesson. Just like anybody in life needs to be taught a lesson. Like, you can't come into these things and be not serious when you're playing professional basketball. And uh, the Hawks deserved it. They deserved that game. And I was glad when that Tatum 3 didn't go in because he wasn't focused all game. He was not focused for that entire game. And Dyson Daniels did play great, you know, yeah, he's, he's got, a hard player not to like, huh? Yeah, and 
but it, they were the Celtics had 20 turnovers and 17 of them were Hawks steals. So yeah. it wasn't just Dyson Daniels. Dyson Daniels was making plays. The other guys were getting kind of handed the ball and the Hawks were trying to hand it the game to you over and over again, whether it was the end of the first half where they had a horrible turnover and then the technical. So the Celtics go into halftime up 11. Um, and then you, you would make a stupid mistake and they would come down and they would shoot in like a uncontested three on a four on one fast break while you're not getting back on defense. It was like they would, these young kids in the Hawks trying to hand you the game, but you were just so disfocused and, and you're saying, like, I heard you say, like, the Hawks made shots, and that was the difference. Well, they really didn't make shots. They got, like, 15 chances to make shots because the Celtics were watching them rebound. And so, to me, it was it was good. It was a wake-up call. It well, I meant of- made shots down the, the stretch. That's that's all I meant. I didn't mean throughout yeah. the course of the game. The, the Tatum's chart went out, and the basketball gods, I thought, paid, you know, paid the right price. They gave it to the Hawks and not the Celtics. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and to your point about the net, it was a great, you know, last third and fourth quarter. I still have concerns about the defense. The net shot 50% for the game. The Celtics this year have been out shooting opponents in losing games, which is something that never happened last year. They hit more threes against Indiana. They hit more threes against Golden State. And they still lost those games. I'm pretty sure they hit more threes against the Hawks, too. I don't think we saw that at all last year. And it was the first time in a year and a half that the Celtics had back-to-back games where they were down double digits um, in the first half. And so these slow starts, I think, are a symptom of a team that is coasting a little bit, which is kind of expected of a championship team. And I think they're allowed to do that. Mm. But I think they should also focus on good habits as best as they can And keep an eye on Cleveland's record because obviously home court throughout the playoffs is important no matter how good your team is. And you don't want to fall too far behind. You're already three games back. And Cleveland's not going to shoot 42% from three for the rest of the season. What they're doing right now reminds me of the Celtics in, what, 2021 or 2020 when they came out shooting like 50% for the first month of the season. Obviously, Cleveland's going to fall off and they're going to start losing some games. But in my mind, no matter who the opponent is, you don't want to fall too far behind. You want to get that one seed. So you can't you can't just continue to coast. You have to you have to play the right way. Um, and so hopefully hopefully they do. But I, I have concerns on the defensive end. And I have concerns on their ability to end possessions with uh, rebounding right now. I think those are things that are are definitely concerning to me. Yeah, and, and I, you know, in the points in the paint, you know, which is something I clean up against in that team. And that team was missing a couple of players too. We we should probably add. Also, um, and like the the sorry, but I got to call out like Drew Carter was like, yeah, they only gave up two offensive rebounds today. What Nets player is a threat to get an offensive rebound? It's not like they were playing against Clint Capella. Oh, Nick Nick Claxton, I, I, I think. I, I guess, think, yeah. but when I mean like. Mm-hmm. I'm not impressed with what the Celtics did on the glass against the Nets. Let's see it. Let's see it uh, against Cleveland on Tuesday. Let's yeah. see it against. Uh, yeah, well, even tonight, like so, you mentioned. Just, I think teams. I think this year there's been a competitive level around the league that early in the season, where the bad teams are a lot closer to the good teams than I can remember. Um, and maybe that has to do with three point shooting. You mentioned teams out shooting the Celtics, so the Celtics out shooting teams and losing, or you know, vice versa. You know, I, you know, teams shooting over fifty percent against the Celtics and losing. I think there is more emphasis on teams spreading the floor more. I think there's more talent, and you know, there isn't a lot of walkover scenarios. Now tonight, the Raptors are without Scotty Bonds. Um, and they they have some issues on just how good they are, but I'd like they to see, see, see the focus early on. What what are they going to do early in the game? What what were you going to say, Mike? I think the focus early in the game is important. And you mentioned it when you were talking about um, just how they they've come out. You know, there's been multiple times now where they're down sixteen to two at right? the two straight games. Uh, they trailed early in the Nets game this last one time out, you know, by double digits. They trailed against the Hawks. So is that focus coming out of the gate? Is that going to be better? And how's that going to look? 
um, I think is important um, as well. You know, and I, you mentioned yeah, and it, it, focus it on good hard. habits. You know, go yeah, ahead. Yeah, it might be hard to tell tonight because the uh, the Raft is uh, the worst team probably in the NBA. I mean, they're competing with Utah. They are just not. They good. play hard. Like they do play hard, and they they make games competitive somehow. For the most part, there hasn't been a ton of games where they've been blown out. Uh, so they're gonna they're gonna come after the Celtics. You're right; the talent gap is is significant, but they're, they're gonna play hard. They will come out and play hard tonight. Well, I'll tell you this though, Jim. Like, I'm not one of the I'm not a fan at, like anymore. That is like the Celtics got to win these games no matter what. If the Celtics don't come out and they're not playing the right way, I want them to continue to lose these games because I think it's the only way you don't do it. The only way you don't do it is you get burned by it over and over again until it stops. So mm -hmm. I would like to see good health habits by the Celtics today. I would like to see them play the right way. more. It's more important to me than winning. Like if they lose a game today and the Raptors shoot like, 50% from three, they're, they're, they're making threes like Utah a couple of years ago when Mike Conley and those guys were just hitting everything. And the Celtics somehow lose because of that. I'll be okay if they're playing hard, if they're moving the ball, if they're getting right yeah. shots, if they're trying to rebound. Like, to me, I want to focus on those things because at the end of the day, we're going to be in the Eastern Conference Finals. And those habits are more important than winning this game in November. Um, Obviously, I'd love them to come out and blow out the Raptors, but I've just seen a little bit over this first month that concerns me in the long term, and they need to learn. Like, and I think players learn by being punished, right? Well, that's didn't why Bobby Knight, so didn't, didn't Bobby Knight once say, "Like, there's nothing mm -hmm. more powerful than ass to seat, seat to ass." Hits brain or something. It's like you know. I don't that... think there's a bigger asshole in sports than Bobby Knight. But um, the I I was so I was really encouraged with um, you know I know Bobby Knight's dead, so maybe I shouldn't speak ill of the dead. But I I, I don't I never really had a ton of respect for the Who way. Yes, it's it like twelve people listen to the pod. Yeah. It doesn't. So, matter. but I that's why I was so <laughs> encouraged with the way the Celtics. Um, you know, responded to that bad first quarter. And I, I, again, you know, the Nets are the Nets, and I get that. But you, to your point, you look at how they approach things and how, how they played. And Tatum and Brown, you know, end of that first quarter, I think Tatum was involved, just scored on the last 13 points. And then Brown, in the beginning of the second, kind of took the torch of what Tatum was doing and continued to get downhill. And I thought that just rose up the level of play in Cornette when he was inserted for uh, Keda, you know, was a guy that was able to respond and, and give them some defense that they weren't having uh, at that center position, you know, throughout the first part of the game and I thought against the Hawks. So now can that continue over? You know, they had three days off. They're coming in on a Saturday night to Toronto. Let's see what it looks like. Um, but when they play like they did against Brooklyn, it's tough, be tough for anybody to beat them. They're tough for anybody yep. to beat them. Mike, exactly. I want to talk a little bit about Nemes Keda. Um, so, you know, he went through that stretch of, you know, Golden State, Brooklyn a week ago where you see all this improvement. There's a lot to be excited about. He's, he's obviously pretty good at the rim defensively. Um, good offensive rebound. What are your thoughts on him right now? Because I have some thoughts. I think the last couple of games he's struggled. Um, he's a little slow in his decision making. Yeah. Uh, where those games you mentioned, he actually was a really good passer. Um, and that's why I was okay with him taking minutes away from Luke because he was doing things that Luke Cornette does, which is really valuable to the offense. Um, obviously, he's a Rin Rummer. Rin rim runner, but um, he's obviously struggling, but I kind of expect that. That's mm -hmm. kind of the way he's going to grow. The only way he's going to get better is to have minutes, and I think the Celtics have the luxury to give him minutes. Um, and with the way that Tillman has played this year, has really opened the door for him to get some time. But I 
still don't think he should be playing over Cornette. I, I think for this season, the goal for me was always developing Keita to be his replacement in case Cornette actually gets paid in the offseason. You can't keep him anymore. And right now, I think Cornette is the guy who helps you have a better record and get that championship. But um, I think Joe saw what we saw and was trying to ride that hot hand. But I think we're starting to see now that um, maybe Cornette should get those minutes back. Well, I, I think you're probably right with Cornette. He's definitely more polished. He knows where to be all the time. You, you can see it on when the Celtics, you know, drive and they throw it up towards the rim. Cornette uh-huh. jumps on time and, and finishes, you know, and he's not as athletic as Cater and doesn't have the same explosion. Um, and he, he just – he doesn't over-pursue defensively. I think, you know, you're seeing some of the flaws that are still in Cater's game when he – goes and helps he's he's helping late or he's taking bad angles i think a great example is yeah. Dennis Schroeder drive um in the in the first half where he came way too close to Schroeder and Schroeder just drove right by him and got a, a diving layup that Cato was late on trying to block but just knowing he can give him space because even if Schroeder pulls up from three he's long enough to react to that and make it difficult. And a perfect example of that was later on in the game when Cornette came in. Um, he closed out well on a three. Paul went did. back to Cam Johnson, played off him enough to play. take away the drive, and then uh-huh. affected Cam Johnson's shot enough on three where he missed it. And, and, yeah. and, and Cam Johnson can make that shot. He might have made it. you know. It's it's, But he made it difficult enough. And that's where Kate is just kind of making mistakes. And you've seen a lot of weird turnovers from White and Holiday when trying to throw it to him up by the rim or on the, yeah. the dunker spot. And, you know, I went back and I just, it looks like Kate is just either jumping too late or too early or he's not quite where he should be to start. So they're, they're having a pause on their delivery. And the timing is just off. Yeah. Now I'll say this. I think his improvement has been remarkable over the course of two seasons, how much he's gotten better. You talk about his passing. Even in the last game against the Nets, a couple of times where I was just really surprised I threw it to him in the middle. He had the he had the sense to look and turn to the corner and find the man open for three. Yeah, that, that's good coaching right and there, it's too. Good, it's good. And it's, a guy needs to take to it too, right? He, and you could yeah. tell the guy that he knows it. And then all of a sudden the game's so fast, he, he yeah. can't make that play. Yeah. He's making that play and, and he's doing other things. It's certainly around the rim. He's blocking shots without fouling. Um, he, he, so what I guess my point is, I think they have to continue just to play him and play him a lot. Yeah. I think they this going him, yeah. is higher with him. It, their floor is a lot lower, right? Right now. Yeah, yeah. I, I, agree I with think that. their ceiling is a lot higher if let's say Porzingis doesn't come back or he gets hurt again with him than it is with Cornette. If yeah. They, and I just I've seen so much rapid improvement that my thought is, all right, what's he, hit- what's this gonna look like game sixty five? Is he yeah. making these mistakes anymore, or is he jumping when he's supposed to jump? Is he in the dunk or spot on time and in position? You know, is he over pursuing on defense? Does he know? Is he is it? You know, does he know he can give some space? Is he taking better angles? And you know, does he make teams pay who are not going to play him on defense? And I, I think I think the answer will be yes, but I think we're going to have some, you know, off it. Some bad moments with him defensively, some offensive rebounds going the other way while he's out there right now. And it's going to be frustrating. But I think you have to just kind of suck it up and let the mistakes happen. Yeah. Well, all three of them are going to play him, Allen, Cornette, anyways. So, yeah. Yeah. I got to go on mute. So that's that's kind of my thoughts with Kata. Um, Tommy still announces when he's going to go potty. Oh, very important. <laughs> Tell him the good that luck with know. his key. You know? <laughs> Better than going that, in your pants. Better than going that in your the pants. whole world knows that you got to take a piss. Yep. Yeah. Um, um, 
Um, Want to go around the league? Yeah, unless you have another <laughs> Celtics thought. I'm ready to go around the league. Another Celtics thought? No, I don't have another. Right. I'm ready to go around the league. Mike, I'm going to ask you a question right off the bat. All right, ask it then. We're only 11 games in, 12 games in. It's not a question. That's a statement. All right. Yeah, that's, that's true. Uh, are the Knicks regretting their trade for Mikel Bridges? Oh, for Bridges? He's I'm averaging 13 points a game. Okay. Wow. He's not defending. Are they regretting their trade for Mikel Bridges? I don't think so. I think one that kind of trade is one of those trades where you're all in. And so I my would... First round I'm Nick, yeah, if I'm a Knicks fan, I would hope that my ownership has the due diligence and the level of um, level of confidence in their own work to think that this is just a bad start to the season for this guy and it's not not long-term. But should they be regretting it? I think we might be getting to that point that this is not working out. Yeah, I think they're probably not regretting it right now. I think there's still time. And, you know, he's figuring out a new role where he's not the main guy with the ball. He's the third option. It's more like the Sun situation than it, anything he had in Brooklyn. Um, but five first round picks. I mean, at the time, I him. said that guy's not worth five first round picks. I mean, that's, yeah. yeah. I mean, if Giannis gets traded, uh, are the Bucks getting more than five first round picks? It might get six. Yeah, I am. You know, so yeah. All right, let's stay I, right with let's stay with the Knicks. Okay. Um, what do you think? Twelve games in of that trade for Cal Anthony Towns. Oh, uh, I like it. Knicks gave up for DiVincenzo and Randall. I like it. I like it. Towns over the Knicks. I like it. He dropped 46 points the other day. Tom Thibodeau's finally woke up to the fact that this guy has to shoot threes. Against the Celtics, that first game of the season, he he had Towns on the post. Yeah. Which Towns was winning those matchups, but to me, you were making your offense more difficult for everybody else on the floor. You weren't utilizing the best big three-point shooter in the game. Um, and I, I still believe that one-two punch with him and Brunson is going to be deadly in the playoffs if they're both, both, both healthy. It's going to be very hard to defend. I think it's better than Giannis and Lillard. Um, I still think the Knicks win, you know, that 52, 55 games. I know right now they're struggling. But, I mean, you see this with teams all the time when they put together these super teams, right? Like, the so first two months of the season could be like 500 basketball. Um, I've always liked this trade for the Knicks. I think defensively, the Knicks aren't very good anymore because you can attack them. You can. It's not a Tom Thibodeau, Thibodeau team, that's for sure. No, it's not. A it's Tom not. Thibodeau. And so but it's it, going to be interesting to see how he reacts to this. You know, if he can embrace what they are, yeah, they're going to win a lot of games. And they're going to be fun basketball, but they're they're not there though. They're not a championship team, and that's it's easy for us to say that because we're not Knicks fans. Um, Nick Nick fans, I think, ultimately are going to be disappointed. Unless, you know, everybody gets hurt and that's what gets the next set. But um, I, I, I don't think it's a trade they regret. Randall is an ISO player. I think He's it's a trade the, that the Wolves regret. Oh, at least I they do. should. Yeah, I, I, I agree. Should. Yeah. yeah, and I think, you know, you made you made the trade for money reasons, so they kind of deserve what they're getting in Minnesota. Yeah, I don't think Randall's a fit there at all in Minnesota from what I've seen so far. And even Kenzo's not fitting great, great either. Yeah. Yeah, which is weird. Because he seems like the type of guy that could fit in on any roster. Yeah. Quite honestly. Yeah. Yeah. Um, but it's a lot. Yeah, you think he would. Anthony Edwards, you know, get a lot of attention and should get open looks out there. Um, yeah. It's it's interesting. Um, all right, you're the Bucks. You get a lucky win against Detroit. When sure Detroit, was lucky. That was a lucky. You know, win. misses the rookie, missed two free throws at the end of the game. Hollins that would uh yeah won the game. Game goes mm -hmm. in overtime. Giannis scores almost sixty points. I think fifty nine points. Guy's awesome, isn't he? So he's amazing. He it, is. You know, really did, it with, is. did it without Willard, which you know they're probably better. They might yeah. be better. <laughs> so if you're a Bucks fan, do you see that as a win? 
as a good one or a bad one. Um, oh, as a Bucks fan, any win is a good win. Any win to keep Giannis in Milwaukee is good because the alternative is I'm the Detroit Pistons for the next decade. So, like, I don't care if I'm beating fucking Toronto in triple overtime. Like, whatever gets my team going is good. That's my answer to that because I think that team's on the brink of blowing it up um, and Giannis not playing there anymore. Yeah, yeah. Um, I think I think you're right, and I, I think you have to look at it as a, hopefully this is, accelerates things. Sometimes just winning games like that can get you going. Exactly. Um, but I, I don't know. I, I think at the end of the day, the Bucks are probably a 500 team this year. Um, so, oh. which is kind I of mean, cool. then let me ask you a question, Jim. Sure. You're the GM of the Bucks. You have no assets. You have one of the oldest teams in the NBA. The only tradable asset you have that can let you reboot the thing is Giannis, one of the best players in the league. What are you doing? Yeah, you're in a tough spot. Like, you got to do everything you can to hope this season turns itself around, even if that means a new coach again, which is hard to believe because they just did that less than a season ago. Because you trade Giannis, and it's it's not like all of a sudden you're rebooting your franchise. Well, because you don't have your own mm-hmm. picks. Because you're probably trading them to a decent team, and mm-hmm. the picks aren't going to be very good. It's it's really it's a tough tough spot to be in, and that's the thing they don't have their own picks. So you you got to do everything to make this work. Um, I I don't really know, Mike. They're in a bad way. Um, I'm not trading Giannis. Yeah. I'm not trading him. And, sorry to interrupt you. Go ahead. I yeah, no, I, I don't think I am either. Would be my answer. I'm not. Unless he demands he it. Me, Unless he demands it. it you know? Exactly. I would just try and try and try, similar to what Philadelphia did forever with Joel Embiid, to see if I can bring somebody else in, to see if I can surround them. Like even if I'm trading my players for lesser talent for guys who just play hard for two years and I'm just yeah. getting in the playoffs. I'm just keeping the window open to bring in a superstar. Similar to kind of like what Brad Stevens did. He brought in Josh Richardson. He brought in Tristan Thompson. Whatever he had to do, right? Like, And then he re-signed some of his own guys that he could turn into trades. Like, I would just be trying everything I can over and over again to, to keep Giannis happy. Um, and put some sort of a competitive team on the floor. Because if not, the alternative is not good. He's going to win a championship somewhere else, and you're going to have nothing to build off of. Um, bad in Milwaukee. Bad in Milwaukee. Bad. I got. I got two more questions. One related to the Celtics. Um, the first one: Who's your favorite league pass teams this year? Oh, Houston Rockets. It's not even close. Oh, well, that's interesting. They weren't on my list. So I'll have to check them out. Yeah, I have. I have three teams that I, I actually I'm really enjoying right now. Um, I like Charlotte too. Charlotte, way. yeah. So Charlotte's yeah. one. Yeah, Charlotte. They they play like they play really freaking hard. Um, Lonzo Ball makes crazy shots. Obviously, <laughs> they, they're like extremely insane. limited. But Trey you know, Man, Trey Man's fun. Um, yeah, Detroit's Detroit's another one that I really yep. enjoy watching this year. <clears throat> Kate really Cunningham. want them to like get in the play in. Yeah, Cape Cunningham's the real deal. He's a real yes. deal. That and um. Another team they just play really hard, and then uh-huh. you know this one shocks me. Um, I, but the Chicago Bulls, they've yeah, actually, actually been uh, fun. They've been a fun team to watch. They're not good. Um, they give up a shit ton of points. They do, but they yeah. play. They're wide open, and Levine's playing really well, and, and White's playing really well. Uh, Vucevic is still a drag Vucevic on that entire well. team. Uh, he's playing, yeah, he's playing like a stretch forward type thing, but he's still a drag. Yeah. Um, but th- those are those are my three teams. I, I, I've just, you know, when I see them on league pass, I usually end up putting on their games. Yeah, I think they lost one forty one to one twenty six or something in regulation last yeah. night to Cleveland. Yeah, and then before that, they had that, but, but they were right in the game. They, they yeah. the full point game with a minute and a half or uh, two minutes left. So it was like they were right there, and then it went downhill fast. Um, and then they had that wild one against the Knicks. They did. You know, they beat them too. Yeah, they beat them. So it's like it's the it 
the games are fun. The games are really, really fun. Speaking of the Cavs, you know, once again, you know, pulled away late against the Bulls. They're right. They continue to win, have not lost, obviously. Um, best offense in the NBA. Best offense in the NBA. What's your prediction for this week? Celtics, Cavs, and Boston. I'll, I'll Celtics there at home. Um, my prediction is I think this might be the one the Cavs get. Oh, it's just, Jim, they're shooting insane from three. They're doing what the Celtics did a couple of years ago to start the season. I don't know if they're going to start losing until – they stop missing. I mean, I, I mean, the Celtics obviously can shoot like that, but um, how do you beat a team that hits all those threes? I just, I, I don't know. I think you. I think, it's, to... I think the Celtics are in a tough spot for this one. Yeah, I think the Celtics are going to win by double digits. I think, I think this is going to be a locked-in Celtics team that's going to be out to prove the championship medal, and that, well, that could you, be you're not ready to take my mantle at home. Um, I think you're going to see the best effort defensively out of their guards and wings. Um, obviously, Cleveland has a clear advantage with their bigs against the Celtics right now without Porzingis. But I, I think you're going to see a focused, locked-in Celtics team um, ready. Yeah, I guess my thing and was I, um, it might not Very physical Celtics team I think you're going to see. Yeah, I, I guess I was just going to say it might not matter if Cleveland hits 23 threes. And, that, and they've been doing this not. against like, everybody. Um, and it's just like, I mean, we've seen this from the Celtics before. Uh, it's not sustainable. It's not. Um, but sometimes the team's just in this place and there's nothing you can do about it. And, and I wonder what Cleveland will do with Darius Gallon. I, I, cause I oh, think defensively, they're going to get beat. Um, yeah, I, I'm like, yeah. they can hide him defensively against every other team they played this year. It's not against the Celtics. You can't hide against the Celtics. And that's, well, uh, um, and I think they get. I think the Celtics are going to treat it like a play. They they're going to say it's another game. I think they're going to treat it like a playoff game. I think Cleveland probably will too. I just think this is going to be a locked in, focused, pissed off Celtics team, just because the the hype that's coming with Cleveland. Well, that's what I'm hoping. Yeah, I think they should. I think they should treat this as you're my little brother, and I'm going to slap you around. Yeah, you I would hope in so. the NBA all the time. The Celtics should approach us this way. You are not. On our level, it's a your winning streak's cute. It's cute. Your three point shooting is cute, but we're the fucking champions, and we'll see. We, we're going to show you. And, and God, it used to happen in the, the Celtics, right? So, like, show it. So that's that's what I want to happen. Uh, I got yeah. We'll see what happens. It'll be it's a big game. I'm looking forward to Tuesday night. Um, I haven't watched a lot of Cleveland this year, but uh, their offensive numbers are off the charts. Um, I got a question for you. How concerned should the Philadelphia fans be about Joel Embiid? I think they should be very concerned right now. They, they have two wins. I mean, Jared McCain, the rookie's really, really good. They made a great pick there. Um, but uh, you watch them against Orlando, they they look slow. They look slow. Um, they're slow on offense. They're slow on defense. They look like an old he basketball looks, team right now, and he looks really bad. Yeah, he doesn't look good. Paul George doesn't look good either, and you expect it to finally start clicking. I know Maxie's out, and they all haven't been up, but they can't win games with one of their superstars out. Like they they that reliant on all three being healthy that they can't win any games if one is missing in the regular I season, think and it's. Yeah, I I think like at some point they have to have a discussion internally about do we have to shut and be down for the season and worry about our long term future. Benchero isn't isn't even on the floor for the Magic, and the Magic dominated the last four minutes of that game. Dominated. Yeah, I you know, did I think the Knicks score right. twenty points in the fourth quarter. I mean the Sixers. I don't think they did. It's yeah, it's, it's not it's great. Not a good situation there, and I don't know the, what are they two and ten now. Yeah, I think they need to consider maybe going after um, this sensation at Duke and shutting shutting things down. Well, they got a point, Mike, where it's you, they're going to be looking at a plan. You know, if yeah. they if they don't smart enough, they, they never mind being in the top seven. They, they're going to be looking at a plan. So, all right, I got nothing left. I'm, I I emptied it all on the pod today, Mike. 
left it all in the pod. Yeah, and I got to take a, since Tommy made an announcement, I got to take a massive.